You want to see the devil start working? Start worshiping the Lord. You want to see the devil come against your family? Start doing something for the Lord. The devil's going to come against you any way he can when you start doing things for the Lord. But I can tell you what, don't push back. You push forward. Don't let up. Get on your knees. If you want to do something for God, you just start worshiping the Lord. You start getting on your knees, fasting and praying, you're going to see hell come against you. But you don't let up. You just keep pushing forward. Glory be to God. Let's worship the Lord tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The devil's trying to come against the ministry right now because he's scared of what God has in store. He's already written a book. All you got to do is read it. Oh, hallelujah. The devil knows what's coming. His time is coming close. All we got to do is keep pushing towards heaven. The devil only attacks what he fears. God's not dead. He's still alive. I said, God's not dead. He's still alive. My God's not dead. He's still alive. I feel him in my hands. I feel him in my feet. I feel him in my heart. I feel him all over me. Yes, God's not dead. He's alive. Oh, God's not dead. He's still alive.
choice. I got joy and peace and everything within. You see my name written down in a last book of life. Oh, can't you see what God has done for me? I said, look what the Lord has done. Oh, yes, look what the Lord has done. Well, now he healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me. Was just sides of in the world and in the church it's not hard to identify the love of God in your life hallelujah it's, it don't take much to figure it out you know that I okay I don't want that no more we'll start moving for God you know yes. when you live out there for so long and then you start looking for something different hallelujah. it's not hard to find it I can tell you you just gotta want the Bible says knock ask and seek and you shall find yes. glory be to God I'm glad I found a church that, yes. church, that preaches truth and that has protection for our families that they do. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Well, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. If they were sitting in and I wish somebody's somebody so would get on fire, get on fire. Times as he gave utterance, and I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire, and be burning with the Holy Ghost. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire. If they were sitting in and I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire and be burning with the Holy Ghost. Well, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire, catch on fire, catch on fire. I wish somebody. 
mighty soul will catch a fire burning with the Holy Ghost. Now there appeared unto them cloven tongues, just like fire shot up in their bones. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They spoke in other tongues as he gave utterance. And I wish somebody told would catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. I wish somebody so would catch on fire. And be burning with the Holy Ghost. Well, I wish somebody so would catch on fire. Catch on fire. Catch on fire. And I wish somebody so would. God is good to us all. God has no respecter of person. I don't care how long you've been in church. God is no respecter of person. He loves me just the same as He does you and you just the same as He does me. Glory be to God. Aren't you glad God loves us? Aren't you glad God gives us a second chance? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I should have been walked, wrote off a long time ago, but God seemed fit to give me a second chance. Thank you, Lord. Did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? Came out of the wilderness. Came out of the wilderness. How did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? Walking and talking with the Lord. Well, tell me how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? Came out of the wilderness. Walking and talking with the Lord. Oh, I 
second chance when I went to prison I got into my Bible I started seeking after the Lord and I became like another child again because the Bible says we have to be like little children if we're not like little children you are none of his so we have to be like our kids we have to be innocent we have to know exactly what God wants in our life if we don't we're headed in the wrong direction let's worship the Lord tonight hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There's no, nothing greater than coming to the Lord for the first time. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's purity. Everything seems to offend you. Things that you used to like that you hung around, you don't want to be around that mess no more because it ain't a, the ways of the Lord. That's how you know when you have become a new person, when the things that you thought was okay start bothering you. But I thank God for that He opened my blinded eye. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise while they're getting ready. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise because He loves us all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
I'll do it all in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost came in. Oh, I'm a classical Pentecostal. Oh, I am not ashamed. I'm a classical Pentecostal. Uh huh. I do it all in Jesus' name. They're gonna preach you a modern gospel. They say it's a new day. What Peter preached on Pentecost, it's all the only way. Classical Pentecostal. Uh -huh. And I am not ashamed Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. God is good to us all. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen, amen. Amen. What a wonderful time to be serving the Lord. It's dark out there. Amen. But the light of Jesus Christ shines brighter and greater and more beautiful than it ever has. Amen. Amen.
Praise God. I was, I've been looking for something to share with you tonight. I can't find it, so can't quote it by memory, so I guess I'll just have to wait. But uh, uh, Brother Shay to be glad, so I don't, this is one of the times I don't preach tonight. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Leave it to the old guy to go pick a song uh, 50, 60 years old. For a long time. For a long time I've traveled Down a long, lonely road My heart was so heavy Sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful eye I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through His saving power world of sin I've been washed in the blood of Jesus been born again hallelujah I'm saved 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 by his wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way like a bird out of prison Oh, that's taking his flight Like a blind man that God gave back his sight Like the poor wretched beggar That's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out through his holy name Thank God I am free, free world of sin well I've been washed in the blood of Jesus been born again hallelujah I'm saved 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 by his wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way well thank God I am free 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 from this world of sin I've been washed in the blood of Jesus been born again hallelujah I'm saved 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 by his wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out and show me the way hallelujah hallelujah can we thank him for his goodness tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Praise God. Amen. I, uh, I get enough of those other kind of texts and calls and things. And, and uh, there's a young lady here that just every now and then sends me some of the Sweetest, most dedicated to God, loving text, amen, about serving the Lord and how excited she is. And, and I want you to know, Sister Savannah, I appreciate that very much. Amen. amen. It means a lot. Amen. It helps his old heart keep pumping. Amen. Amen. Some Jesus juice. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. What, a, amen. what an awesome thing it, it is to see. A life transformed. Amen. Amen. The Lord is so merciful to us. Praise God. Amen. I like to be around folks that, that are Jesus minded. Amen. Praise God. Or like precious faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That are excited about the things of God and what God is doing and what He's going to do next in our lives. Amen. There's so many people think it's such a drudgery to serve God. Amen. I don't understand that way of thinking because uh, it is an absolute pleasure, an absolute honor, amen, to serve the Lord Jesus Christ and, and be about his work and his kingdom. Amen. Ain't nothing like it. Hallelujah. 
Amen. We're blessed to be a part of the church of the living God. Amen. We uh, are going to uh, get out of the way pretty quick. Uh, that was only the first little sermonette, so before I before I get too carried away, he's done named how many I'm going to do per service. Amen. Brother Thomas done a, about a six or eight of them. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. I've tried to, t I've tried to tell them uh, sometimes you don't have to uh, preach between service, uh, between it. Just kind of encourage everybody to worship. Amen. Sometimes the Spirit of the Lord is moving so wonderful that you could say boo real loud and somebody would shout. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. I got to listen to Brother, uh, listening to Brother Jones out there uh, singing at his church today in New Mexico uh, on the cell phone today. And uh, I can't move my legs very fast, but I about throw an arm out of socket. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, don't worry, my wife and my and my mammy in law was on the other end of the trailer. Amen. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just enjoy worshiping the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we've got several that uh, have uh, contacted myself and said uh, that uh, they have fever and. Uh, so uh, I went over there uh, at, at lunch today and was fixing to sit down, and, and I seen a man I knew, and uh, he was just right in the middle of blowing his nose. And I thought, how am I going to shake this guy's hand? <laughs> Amen. Y'all know me. Amen. So he, he, we could done the elbow bump and said that evil word. Amen. I, Brother, I don't know what you got, but, but here. <laughs> Amen. But uh, uh, we do have uh, Sister Desiree uh, is running fever today, and uh, uh, Sister Kelly is also uh, sick and uh, feverish, and uh, Sister Carrie and Brother Scotty are both feverish. I suspect it has a whole lot to do with the pollen and all kinds of stuff in the air. Uh, it just that time of the year. And actually, uh, I don't know what time of the year it lets up. <laughs> Amen. Used to, Brother Jimmy, they were sick all winter and everybody kind of got well in the spring and summer. I, now they just sick all year long. I, I don't know, it's, especially since that oh, ugly C word. Y'all remember that? Amen. Praise God. I, I still run the aisles around the hospital uh, when somebody starts sneezing and coughing. I don't know what they got. I mean, maybe not quite literally, but I, I, me and my wife say, uh, uh, you in Walmart, they start that mess. Uh, I, I'll walk the long way around. Amen. You ain't got no faith. I ain't dumb either. <laughs> Amen. Amen. God gave you a little noodle up there. Don't don't intentionally catch it. Amen. Y'all, you folks that drink after each other when you were snotting and carrying on, y'all worry me. Come on, brother Trigger. Uh, don't even go there. You grabbed a glass the other day. You took a drink of it, and you don't even know what was in it before. Don't even go there. He's out the house. He goes, oh, <laughs> "What was that?" Took a drink first, and the. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. <laughs> it happened, brother. It happened, brother. He needs to be rebaptized after that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo. Can you pray for us, brother Gabe. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, we need to pray for these folks that are sick. In body tonight. I know you just, this is uh, calisthenics tonight, but I know you just were seated. But if you would, let's stand again and pray for them that God would touch uh, their bodies and make them whole. Amen. Lord Jesus, Lord, we're so thankful, God, to be able to be in your house tonight. 
We thank you for the opportunity for those of us that are here that are well, oh God, and we're here excited about the things of God and the work of God. Lord, speak to our hearts tonight in this place. I pray, Lord, that you would touch, Lord, these precious folks that are unable to be here, that are online with us right now. We pray that you would heal them and touch them, oh God. We pray, Lord, that you would touch the fevered brow, cool that brow. Lord Jesus, whatever is causing this, whatever the source of the problem is, we pray against it, oh God. We pray for your healing. We pray for your touch. We pray for your deliverance. We pray for your help right now, O oh God. Lord, for the Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. We pray, God, for Sister Quana right now that you would touch her. Lord, bring her home in the name of Jesus. We ask God for your touch and your blessings today, Lord. Move through the remainder of this service tonight. Bless the Joneses online right now, God. Lord, that you would touch in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory and honor in the name of Jesus. We honor you, Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Blessed be the Lord. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You can be seated tonight. Praise God. I know that these good folks uh, have names other than Sister Melissa's family. I know y'all do. Amen. It'll take me a, a little while to learn it. Amen. You hang around long enough. I do know I like that guy. Amen. We got over there. We wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, talk to each other two minutes. We started talking about food. <laughs> Amen. Woo, he is. Amen. I didn't invite myself to dinner, but it's coming. <laughs> Amen. Woo, hallelujah. Amen. Well, but uh, I apologize. I'm not good with names anyway, anyway, but we are thrilled to have y'all again tonight. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We are going to change the order of the service tonight. And, of course, Brother Shade usually does the announcements, and uh, I'm sure he'll turn it back over to me before he gets ready so I can preach again before he preaches. <laughs> Amen. Come on, brother. Praise the Lord. Gabe, will you help us tonight take up the Sunday night tithe, please? Thank you, sir. We do have quite a few announcements. I tried to write them all down, and then Sister Tanya is whispering things uh, to me a while ago that I forgot. Uh, but please remember that we still have the sign-up sheet for uh, the 40 days of prayer and fasting out there. Um, and don't forget, get a picture of that with your phone or something so that you'll have those with you. Just as a reminder, uh, we appreciate everybody getting involved in helping with the 40 days of prayer and fasting. And um, we will have revival services um, Monday through Wednesday night here at 7 p.m. 6.30 prayer meeting. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night right here at the church. Um, this Friday night at 7 p.m. will be a youth service. And, um, and then Saturday morning, the teens are going to go fishing. And Brother Nathaniel said they're going to meet at his house at 6 a.m. So if you want to go fishing, apparently they do that early. So um, <laughs> they're going to meet at his house at 6 a.m. He said if the teens need uh, to spend the night because that is so early right after the youth um, service, then they will make sure that all of the teens have somewhere to stay. Um, just let the, the youth leader know. And that's him right there that just walked out of the drum room. So... Um, <laughs> Please let him know. So we got Friday night youth service at 7. Saturday in the morning, the teens are going on a fishing trip at 6 a.m. Sunday, we'll have both of our normal services, 10 in the morning, 6 in the evening. Between services after Sunday school, we're going to do the spaghetti fundraiser um, just as soon as we get done with Sunday school. And that will be for the Ogden family. Um, and the way that's going to work is they're just, we're just taking donations. Pastor said whether you have um, a dollar to give or uh, a whole lot more, we want everybody to stay in fellowship. Um, or if you have nothing to give right now, that's fine too. Uh, we won't turn anybody away. That'll just be um, putting some things uh, secretly between you and the Lord um, toward that fundraiser for them. So Sister Tanya said if you want to help with um, the setup and preparation for the spaghetti dinner, please get with her. Um, if you want to help with salads and desserts, just get with her, um, and we're going to make sure that we have everything ready uh, for next week for that fundraiser. 
The last thing that's not on the list, candle orders should be here this week. And so we've got uh, 275 of those to sell. Huh? 268 of those that have already been sold to deliver. And so those should be here this week. We appreciate everybody helping out with that. It was a huge blessing to the church. And uh, we look forward to the next thing we got on the books as far as fundraisers is going to be the Mother's Day truffles. Um, and so that will start pretty soon as well. So um, lots of good things happening in the house of the Lord. If you need more of that information after service, then um, go back and rewatch the video because I probably won't remember all of it either. Uh, but I do have it written down here if you need to come get a picture of something as well. Amen. Uh, we do, I would like to say, I'm terrible with names. Y'all forgive me. Uh, I'm trying to remember my own some days. But uh, Brother Rudy and Sister Ruth Ann, we are thrilled that y'all keep coming. God bless y'all. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So good to see you, Sister Kay, the lone stranger here tonight. Amen. Praise God. Half the time she's out chasing kids all over the country. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Brother Ronnie Todd, thrilled to see you tonight. We miss you this morning. God bless you, sir. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, uh, I'm going to turn it back to Brother Shade uh, without preaching. Go ahead. Come on. Praise the Lord. Could you imagine the 12 disciples when they got together, how often, how, how many different messages they preached to each other? The Bible says that when Peter and Paul got together, that they, uh, the, the word translates to history, that they historyed for 15 days together. Could you imagine the things that they were able to discuss, amen, and, and what they knew from the word and the experiences that they had with Jesus? Um, so... I'm going to preach again here tonight and um, obey the word of the Lord. Once again, th these are things, everything that I preach is something that I know applies to my own life. And, and I'm typically standing up here preaching to myself, um, more so even than I'm preaching to the congregation and just uh, knowing that the Lord, anything that the Lord has to share um, that's good for me is also good for everybody else. And so uh, we know that the Lord can use any of us, and um, it's good to be willing, it's good to be available to the Lord. Um, Sister Kay is one of those that will, will make herself available. There's been lots of times where she's tracked me down at Choctaw headquarters and, and had me pray with some people. We, we met one day and prayed with Sister Rhonda in the prayer room up on the third floor and quoted scriptures and saw the Lord do some work in that. And so... Uh, it's always good when, when we are willing and able to bless one another and to be used in the kingdom of God. So if you have your Bibles and you will stand with me, um, this won't be the last time you stand, but it might be the last time you stand for a little bit. Um, if you'll stand with me, I'm going to start in the book of Joel, in the Old Testament, Joel, a very small book. At the end, one of the minor prophets, starting with Joel chapter 2, verse 18. And I'm going to read for a little bit, and then I will let you sit down. Hear the Bible, in the Bible, the word of the Lord says, Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea and his stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month, and the floors shall be full of wheat." And the fat shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten. 
the canker worm and the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed, and you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. So we're looking here at the book of Joel. This is a man who's quoted in the New Testament. We're going to look at that quote as well today, but he's talking about restoration. Verse 25 says, and I will restore to you the years that you lost. So here, by the help of the Lord tonight, I want to be able to preach to you before and after restoration. Before and after restoration. If you will, bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, we thank you so much for letting us be here tonight, for giving us another opportunity together in your name to hear your word, to uplift one another, to, uh, Lord, share our testimonies that build our faith, that make us overcomers, to be able to build one another up, Lord, to worship you and to hear your word, Jesus. And we ask that as we are hearing your word, that you will help us to be more than hearers but doers, to apply this word to our life, to follow your word, Lord, to be able to be more like you. And and take this word and be witnesses for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise the Lord, you can be seated. And so here in the book of Joel, he's talking about restoration, all of the things that had come against the land of Israel, all of these things that they had had to suffer for so many years. And the Bible says in verse 25, the Lord speaking, and I will restore to you those years, the things that were lost. The Lord is giving them restoration for the lost time that they had in his blessings. Now, this is something that happens in our own lives um, that's modeled over and over and over by the children of Israel in the Old Testament. Whenever they would walk away from God, whenever they would not follow his word, there was always a season where they were attacked, where they were subdued, where they were taken slaves, where things happened um, from armies outside, and even natural things that happened because of the curses of the Lord. And sometimes in our own lives, we see things happen to us that we have brought on ourselves by not following what the Word says. And we spend a lot of times wondering why this just, merciful God who can't lie allows these things to happen to us without realizing that because he is just and can't lie, he has to go by his word. And his word says that when we serve him, we're blessed, but when we don't, we are cursed. When we don't serve the Lord, we don't um, have access to the blessings that his word brings. But one of the things that we see over and over throughout the Old Testament is this concept of restoration. When the children of Israel will finally realize that they had messed up and start to get it right. And that's the before restoration part. So if we're looking in the book of Joel, before restoration, those verses start in Joel chapter 2 verse 12. What has to happen before restoration can come into our lives. We can see this in Joel chapter 2, starting with verse 12. The Bible says, Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. We're doing fasting and prayer right now. This is a part of this process of drawing closer to the Lord. Verse 13, And rend your heart and not your garments. One of the issues they had was the uh, religious people who were putting on a show of a relationship with God, they would tear their clothes whenever they were repentant. But it was all just for show. So the prophet here through the Lord says, don't even put on a show. Don't go out there and pretend like you're being repentant, but actually repent. I don't need you to tear your clothes. I need you to rend your heart. It's not about putting on a show, but it's about true repentance that leads to restoration. Verse 13, and rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sanctify a fast. 
call a solemn assembly. These are things that are happening right now in this church. We're getting ready to fast. We're gathering together in His name. We're putting extra effort into the work of the Lord so that we can see people be restored. That's the whole goal. For ourselves and for anybody that comes through our doors. Verse 16, he says, Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breast. Let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them Wherefore, should they say among the people, where is their God? These are the verses that come right before what we just read about restoration. And we, there are a lot of people in the church today, and there are a lot of people in the world today that are seeking for God's restoration, and they want His blessing, and they want Him to take away the reproach, and they want Him to fix their finances and their health and their family, and they want the Lord to do all of these great things, but the Bible is very specific that something has to happen before restoration can start. And that something is repentance. Repentance has to happen first. He said, let the priest weep between the altar and the porch. If you want the Lord to restore, then we have some work to do first. We've got to be willing to align our lives with his word to get rid of the things in our heart that do not align with his word. This is where restoration starts. What comes before? Repentance. Repentance. And then we read the scriptures that we already read. The Bible says he wants to restore. The Lord wants to bless. And to not only restore, but the Bible goes as far as to say to restore those lost years. Those years that were lost when you stepped away from your calling. Those years that were lost when, when you got distracted or for whatever reason, church hurt, for um, issues with, with our jobs, things going on in our families, the distractions of this world that draw us away from the Lord. The Bible says He can make it as though that never happened and restore every one of those years. So we've got repentance to get to that restoration. And then we can read what happens after restoration in Joel chapter 2, start with verse 28. The Bible says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and upon the servants and upon the handmaidens in those days will I pour out my spirit. We talked this morning about how people are desperate for the bread of life. People are desperate for the Spirit of God. We were created for relationship. The only reason we exist is because God wanted something to have relationship with Him because it wanted to. The angels are mechanical beings that have no choice in what they do. And they're fulfilling their role. But God wanted something more meaningful. He wanted a people. He wanted a presence that would serve him out of love. And that's why we were created. And, and, and until we get back to that point, we can never be satisfied with who or what we are. When you're created to be something and you're not that, there's no way that you can be happy. And the Bible says that's what the Lord wants. He wants to get to the point where He can pour that Spirit out, where we can share that communion and that personal relationship with Him. Because we know what it takes before repentance, but what comes after repentance? Verse 30, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, and the sun shall be turned into darkness. Has that happened recently? And the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord hath said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. 
Repentance has to come before restoration, and after restoration comes the outpouring of God's Spirit. And there are people who are trying to grow in their relationship with God, and, and they're getting these steps mixed up. Or they're, they're leaving pieces out. Because the Bible says that our flesh is enmity against God. In this flesh there is no good thing. And so if, if we're not willing to put our flesh and our wants and our desires and our emotions and our thoughts in subjection to Him through repentance, there's no way we can ever have that relationship. Because it's not about what we want. We weren't created for what we want. We were created for what God wants. That personal, intimate relationship of serving Him out of desire, out of love. That's what we were created. But we can't get there without repentance. Then we can be restored. Then He can pour His Spirit out. But they have to happen in that order. Before and after restoration, before you've got to have repentance, and afterward you are guaranteed an outpouring of His Spirit. This is repeated if you look in the book of Psalms, chapter 51. Start with verse 10. A set of scriptures that, that we all know very well. The Bible says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence. Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Even David had to go through this. Being a man after God's own heart, but still being a man. And making mistakes. A man who, who was able to pen so many of these psalms and do great things. And, and he took out Goliath and he helped grow the kingdom of Israel. And even today is recognized as, as their most effective and famous king. But he was still a man that had to work through these steps. And he pens these words to the Lord. A psalm of David when Nathan the prophet came unto him after he had gone into Bathsheba. David was supposed to be at war with his men. He decided to take a day off and was up on the balcony and saw a beautiful woman bathing and called her to his palace and committed adultery with her. And she became pregnant. And in order to cover it up, he called her husband Uriah back from the battle. But Uriah was too good of a man to go home and be with his wife. He said, if my brothers in, in arms can't be with their wives, then I won't either. And he slept on the porch of the palace. And when David realized that that didn't work, he sent Uriah back to the army, to, to the battle, and he told the, the leaders of the battle, he said, drive in, and when you get real close, pull out and leave Uriah by himself so he will be killed. This is the man that wrote this scripture that we're reading. The great King David that we all read about. And he had this man killed to cover his sin. But guess what? Uriah's blood wasn't the right kind of blood to cover sin. And it didn't work. And the prophet Nathan shows up at David's house. And he says, there was this poor man who had one sheep. And this rich man had all kinds of sheep. And he showed up. And he took that poor man's sheep and killed it and fed it to his friends. And David said, let that man be killed. And Nathan said, thou art the man. It's a hard thing, but this is what we have to hear sometimes. When the word of the Lord comes forth, and he is trying to draw us closer to him, we don't have the right to throw it over our shoulder and say that applies to somebody else. That's not for me. I don't think I agree with that part. That part of the word is it's for the old times. It's not for right now. We don't have the right to say that this word doesn't apply to us. And the man of God had to look King David in the face and say, Thou art the man. And what made King David great was his reaction to the man of God telling him, You're the one that did it. Because the Bible says he immediately started repenting. Repentance 
You cannot have restoration without repentance. So when David is writing this, create in me a clean heart, O God, or renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. This is after he's had a man killed to cover the fact that he had an adulterer with his wife. And she got pregnant and that baby had to die according to the word. And his first response was repentance. Does that mean everything that he did was okay? It absolutely does not, because that baby had to die. And that's a precious life. But we can see what was going through David's mind before he wrote restoration. When we look at the beginning of Psalms chapter 51, start with verse 1. This is what David said before he asked for restoration. He said, have mercy on me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. We live in a world today that does not want to acknowledge sin. Go do what you want. Follow your heart. You know, live your dream. It doesn't matter. Nobody can tell you what's right or wrong. No, that's not what the Bible says. And until we are willing to acknowledge our sin and repent of that, we can never get to the point of restoration and Holy Ghost outpouring. So David had to write these things first. Verse 3 again. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee, the only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight? That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. He said, I acknowledge, Lord, that it was against you. And whatever your judgment is, it can be clear because I know this is, this is my, my problem. Verse 5, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, speaking to the Lord, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Before David could ever ask for restoration, he had to acknowledge his sin in his most inward parts. Thou desirest truth in the inward parts. God cannot forgive and restore until we are ready to acknowledge our sin. He wants to restore and he wants to forgive more than we even know. And David wrote about that. His mercies that never end, his loving kindness. But we've got to be willing to do our part first. David had to repent, then he could ask God for restoration. And after the restoration, what does the end of Psalms chapter 51 say? Start at verse 13. David says, then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. What happened on the day of Pentecost when they got in one mind and one accord, and they were repentant, and they were restored? The tongues came forth, because that's going to be the last step. Whenever you get through repentance and restoration, God will speak through you to other people. You won't be able to help but speak his praises you won't be able to help but go out and tell somebody about the amazing loving kindness of the Lord and David couldn't contain it after restoration he had to say my tongue won't be able to stop it it was like fire shut up in my bones I didn't want to speak about it anymore but because of God's loving kindness because of his restoration I got to go tell somebody how good the Lord is When you truly get repentance and restoration, you can't contain what God has done for you. You can't help but tell people what God has done for you. The Bible, the, David said, my tongue will sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, 
a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou wilt not despise. He said, Lord, there's nothing I can bring you to make you forgive me. There's not enough money or sacrifice or offering that I can lump, come lay before you to force you to forgive me. I can't buy the love of God. But when I am truly repentant and broken and acknowledge my sin and acknowledge how much I need you, that's the only sacrifice that God is willing to accept. A broken and a contrite spirit. Don't come up here to this altar and say, Lord, here I am. Here's me with all of my goodness and all of my effort and, and all of my talent and all of my money and all of my stuff. If you want to use me, then you better do something about it. That is not how the Lord moves. But if you want to get the attention of the Lord, you got to be willing to come humbly before him and say, I don't deserve it, Lord. I messed up just like everybody else in this house. And there's nothing I can do to earn your love. But I know that you still love me. I know that your loving kindness is still going toward me and I know that you're willing. So Lord, I will be broken. I will be contrite before you. Before restoration, you've got to have repentance and after restoration, you are guaranteed the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. It happens every time we look in the Word. Go to Acts chapter 2. Sister Mary was just reading about this. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. I don't think I gave you this one, brother. I just threw it out there. Thank you. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. This is the day the Holy Ghost was poured out. And, and, and Peter had just preached on the day of Pentecost about what Joel said. He just preached about the Spirit of God being poured out. And, and the Lord moving on people. And the Bible says that the people he was preaching to were pricked in their heart. And they asked Peter, what do we do? And what can Peter say other than anything that David has already said? Then Peter said unto them, repent. The first step to come into the Lord, to come into the Lord will always be repentance. And he says, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. The point of being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ is to wash away your sin and restore your innocence. Baptism in Jesus' name is restoration. The whole point is for us to be able to... The, the word holiness means to retreat back into the garden, to that place of intimate relationship that we had with Jesus. And when we are baptized in the name of Jesus for the remissions of sins, you are restored into that innocence, into that holy relationship with Him. And from there, he says, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And how do we know? What does the Bible say? You will know they receive the Holy Ghost by what comes out of their mouth. The same thing that was spoken in Joel. The same thing that David had to write about. The same thing as what Peter preaches on the day of Pentecost. If you want restoration, you got to have repentance first. And then you're guaranteed the outpouring. It will happen. There's no doubt about it. It is not something that the Lord is willy-nilly with. It's not something that he changes his mind about. But it is a promise because what does 239 say? For the promise is unto you and to your children and all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Every single person in the world is guaranteed this promise if you are willing to repent. If you want that restoration, if you want to enter back into that intimate relationship with God and allow Him to speak through you and move through you and live through you, before and after restoration, it starts with our repentance. Repentance. There's some work that we have to do. Now, thankfully, the Bible says we don't have to do it alone. Amen? Look in Galatians chapter 6, verse 1. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Galatians, says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault... Ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. 
considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. He said, if, if, if somebody in your church messes up, if you've got a brother or a sister in Christ that messes up, because it's guaranteed, being baptized in Jesus' name doesn't wash away your humanity. Lots of us have been baptized, and since that day, we're still human and we still mess up. And there are going to be times where we need the church to help restore us. And this is one of those places. This is one of those churches where we want to help you be restored. The Spirit of the Lord is already moving here. He's already doing great things. We're not waiting for the sign. They're already here because we already believe. He's already promised it. His Word comes forth. His Spirit is being poured out just like it was in the book of Acts. And here we see this is one of those churches where we have a room full of people who are willing to help restore you according to the word of the Lord. This is one of those places where you can come and we're not going to kick you out or tell you how terrible you are or tell you got to leave and you have to line up to everything that we say. We are here to restore that relationship. To help you get back to that point. Because every single person in this house had to have somebody help them get back there. Every single person in this house had to have somebody preach the word. And somebody pray with them in the altar. And somebody take their hand. And somebody lead them to the altar to help them get to that point of repentance. This is a church where we are trying to fulfill the word of God. And live what the apostle Paul said here. We want to help you be restored. We want to help you get back to the point of that innocence in your relationship with God. We want to help you with that repentance. We want to help you with that holiness that draws you back into that intimacy. We want to help you be restored, and we want to shout with you when the Lord pours His Holy Ghost out. We want to praise the Lord with you when your tongue can't help but say it. This is a place where you can come and be restored in your spirit with God. And you don't have to worry about all of the years that were lost people coming to the church and and the spirit of the lord is drawing them the spirit of the lord is trying to get them drawn to the altar into that personal relationship and they're worried about all the things that they've done but the, but the bible already says in the book of joel he will restore all of those years the lord spoke through joel and he penned those words. If you're in a position right now where you need that restoration, don't let anything in your past hinder you from repentance and getting closer to the Lord. Because the Bible says he will restore every one of those years that you've lost. He will restore everything that you could have been. He will restore those promises. He will restore his blessings. He will restore his word in your life. Don't wait and sit there in condemnation. The Bible says, if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. And there are people that come into the house of the Lord where His Spirit is being poured out. Where they're being drawn to repentance so that they can be restored and filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and they're so condemned in their spirit by the things that they have or haven't done over the past years that, that they don't take that step. But this is not the place or the time for that. This is a house where we are living Galatians chapter 6 where we're trying to help you be restored. We're not here to condemn you. We're not here to push you away. We're not here to to tell you you can't or you shouldn't or shoulda, coulda, woulda. We're here to tell you that no matter where you've been, the Lord can restore. No matter what you've done, He still loves you. No matter how far from God you have gone, He's still here begging you to get back to that intimate relationship with Him. The Lord wants to give you everything that you've lost. In those years that you were not walking close to him. He promised it. We quote Joel all the time in the apostolic church. All the time we quote Joel. Because Peter did on the day, on the day of Pentecost. But Joel also said that God will restore the years. In the exact same chapter where Joel said he would pour out his spirit on all flesh. 
And we are supposed to be living that. We are supposed to be a church where people can come to this place and be restored in their relationship with God. We're supposed to be a church where people can show up and be drawn to the altar and have somebody pray with them. We're supposed to be a church where they can show up and we've already been here and we've been praying and we got the Holy Ghost moving so they can step right into that spirit because he said, when I, the Son of Man, am lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. We're supposed to be that church that is spiritual and restoring people. Just as much as we're supposed to be a church where His Spirit is poured out. Just as much as we're supposed to be a church that gets to experience Acts chapter 2 nearly every service like we do. And there are churches all over the world who are begging for this. Just as much as we're supposed to be a church where we have repented and we've been restored and we've stepped into that Spirit, we are supposed to be a spiritual church that is helping restore others. Will you put Galatians chapter 6, verse 1 back up there? If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are, spiritual, which are spiritual, restore such an one. A measure of our spirituality, a measure of how close we are to God, is our willingness to restore people. Our willingness... To forgive people who've done us wrong. Our willingness to look beyond the things that were said and done. And I'm not saying that we do so by stepping outside of the order of the word. Because the Bible says those individuals got to repent first. We don't invite just anybody back into the house until they are ready to repent. Once they're ready to repent, we're here and we're ready to help them restore. But Brother Pickard's got a job to protect our church from people who are not willing to repent. But if, if somebody shows up here and they want that intimate relationship with God that was promised from creation, that, that was our calling from creation that Peter preached about over and over and over, that the Apostle Paul preached about and wrote about over and over and over. If somebody shows up and they want that, we should be willing to help restore them. We should be prepared to help restore them because every one of us has been in that state. He said it here at the end of this verse. Restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. As long as we are alive, we've got a whole lot of propensity to mess up again. As long as we're alive, there's a whole lot of potential that we're going to need some restoration pretty soon. And what would our churches look like if it were full of people who refused to restore one another? They would all be empty. Because the Apostle Paul also wrote, all have sinned. All have fallen short. Every one of us have been there. And this is our job right here tonight. Our job right here tonight is to help restore somebody that is coming closer to the Lord, that is trying to draw closer to Him. Whether we're talking about people who never had a relationship with God or somebody that's been showing up every service. Our job right here tonight is to help restore each other. This is a promise in the Word of God and something that we are supposed to be living. We know the works of repentance. We preach that all the time. We know about the Holy Ghost being poured out. We preach it all the time and we see it happen in our church all the time. But we can't forget restoration in the middle of that. Because the Bible already said, that in tongues and interpretation, that the Lord is going to be sending us people who need restoration. He's going to be sending us people who've been hurt in other places by other people. He's going to be sending us individuals who are being drawn to His Spirit and they don't even know why or how. He's going to be sending us people that are desperate for that relationship who are ready for repentance and restoration, and we got to be ready to help get them to the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. 
Now, this word here, restore, goes back to the Greek word, katartizo, katartizo. And it's a few other places in the New Testament. One of those, brother, I'm not going to read through all of these. I'm just going to go through them real quick. Is in Matthew chapter 21, when Jesus has his triumphal entry back into the city, and he goes into the, te- uh, the, the temple, and he flips over the tables, and he's, he's healing the lame and the blind in the temple. And the Bible says the children gathered around them, gathered around Jesus, and were saying, Hosanna to the king. Blessed is the son of David. And they were praising Jesus. And the Pharisees got mad. And Jesus said, have you not read that out of the mouth of babes has he perfected praise? That word perfected is the exact same word for restoration that we just read in Galatians. If you want to know how to start on the path of restoration, it's going to come through your praise. And people come to the house of the Lord, and we're so caught up in condemnation, we come to the altar, and we feel like we got to lay here. Well, I've been gone from the Lord for, for 3, 4, 10, 15 years. I probably need to sit here and repent for just that long. And that is not what the Bible says. The Bible says if you have a repentant heart, you don't have to sit here and beg God for His mercy. He wants to give it to you more than you want it. After you have repented, you can start praising the Lord right then. You can start that restoration process right Right then, just by talking about how good the Lord is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, the Apostle Paul writes to the Corinthian church, and he says, I pray that you will be perfectly joined together. It's the exact same word as restoration. The church has got to support one another in our relationship with the Lord. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3, the Bible talks about faith. And it says, by faith, the worlds were framed by the Word of God. It's the same word for restoration. The Word of God that we speak to one another will help us restore each other. You don't got to show up here and tell people what you think. Because what you think ain't going to get you or me to heaven. But the Bible says his word won't return void. So if you want to know how to help restore people in their relationship with God, all you got to do is speak his word because that's what restored the whole world, the whole universe, by the spoken word of God. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, they wrote again, I pray that the spirit of the Lord and the knowledge of the Lord will make you perfect. Over and over in the New Testament, the apostles write to the church that we've got to restore each other. We've got to support each other. We've got to help each other out. Because every one of us are going to be mess-ups. Every one of us in our relationship with God are going to do things that we shouldn't and wish we hadn't and we've got to come and repent again for. The apostle Paul wrote that he had to die daily. And so far in my life, I'm pretty much the same. I haven't, I haven't exceeded the Apostle Paul yet. Every day got to repent over something. And I need this church to be here to help restore me. And you need me to be here to help restore you. Restoration cannot happen without repentance. And as soon as you get repent, the Apostle Peter said it the easiest way. Repent. Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You've got repentance, restoration, and His Spirit right there in one verse that applies to every single one of us today. And a room full of people who are here ordained by God to help restore each other. And that's what we're going to do right now, if you'll stand with me. This is an opportunity for the Lord to draw us all closer to Him. This is an opportunity for us to be used by God to fulfill Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, to be spiritual and restore one another. Let the Lord use you right here tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. These altars are open tonight. Amen. Anybody that wants to seek the Lord... You want to draw closer to him. Amen. 
Time's getting late in this old world, and I want to draw closer to God. Amen. Praise God. I want to take every opportunity I can to seek the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't let's just bow a knee to the Lord tonight and talk to him and ask him to help us and strengthen us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Yo 
don't deserve another chance when we think God won't give us a second glance for every mistake that we
forgiven because you were forsaken and I'm accepted
Amen, amen. Praise God. Bro brother, what is your name? Yes. Jody? Amen. I, I, need to, I need to learn that because I want I want to see more of you. We're glad y'all came. God bless y'all. Amen. Praise God. Brother Jody is so uh, thankful to have you and your family here. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We are going to uh, uh, continue tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tuesday and Wednesday night. And uh, what a phenomenal word from the Lord tonight. Amen. Praise God. Wonderful. I don't know about you, but I want a closer walk with him. Amen. A closer walk with him. Praise God. Amen. And uh, we, uh, we appreciate what God is doing. Continue to pray for those that are sick in body. Uh, Brother Jones has sent me a... Um, let me look in here. Look here. There's a lady that's uh, eight months expectant that has high blood pressure to the point they are med flatting her from Mount Pleasant to Dallas. Her name is Carly Deaton, and he has asked that we pray for her and uh, ask that God would touch touch that lady and that child. Amen. Praise God. We appreciate what God is doing. Amen. Hallelujah. This is, this is what will keep, uh, keep you on the straight and narrow. Amen. I don't want to get off track. I want to I make heaven. Amen. Brother, I appreciate tonight our good conversation. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. It's exciting. It's exciting to set up a Bible study right in the middle of church. It's wonderful. Beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I'm not the guy that does the announcements. It's usually him, and sometimes I'm preaching or whatever. But uh, if, you, if you really like him, uh, stick around. He goes to church here. <laughs> Amen. But uh, we appreciate all of our young ministers. Amen. Uh, my son and Brother Thomas and... Uh, <laughs> Amen, brother. I appreciate you. Praise God. Amen, brother Jason. He's he's a great guy. Amen. God's God's blessed us with the best. Amen. Well, come, brother, and and close the service. Praise the Lord. Please don't forget. Uh, like he said, we'll continue revival Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, seven o'clock service. Uh, 6.30 prayer meeting, song service at 7 o'clock. This Friday night, we'll have a youth service at 7 o'clock, 6.30 prayer meeting. Saturday morning, the teens are going on their fishing trip at 6 a.m. So if they need to spend the night, uh, please get with the youth leader, Brother Nathaniel Pickard, about that. He's in the drum room right now. Um, and then remember that on Sunday, we'll have both services, 10 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the evening, with the spaghetti fundraiser after Sunday school. So as soon as we get out between 12 and 1230, we'll do the uh, spaghetti fundraiser. And that's for everyone to stay in fellowship. And then if you have an offering to be able to help the Ogden family uh, for our church to be a blessing to them, then we'll um, take that up uh, privately. And then other than that, the candle should be here um, sometime this week. So um, hopefully we'll soon we'll be able to get those out to be delivered. If you want to help with the spaghetti fundraiser, please get with Sister Tanya about that. The sign-up sheet for the 40 days of prayer and fasting is still out there. Make sure you take a picture of the days you signed up for just as a reminder. Um, and we'll be starting the Mother's Day Truffles fundraiser real soon as well. So uh, we appreciate everybody helping out in the kingdom of the Lord and look forward to seeing everybody back here. Does anybody